Okay, so the first device that we're going to test this is the iPhone. So at this point, our iPhone has been fully onboarded and registered with ICE. And if you're wondering how that's been done, please check out the previous video, SEC0113. With this, okay, let me bring up the iPhone. We might need to reconnect just to make sure that the new authorization rule has been enforced or in effect. So let me go under setting. And then let me just turn off and on Wi-Fi. Let me make sure it reconnects. It did. And before we proceed, let me check the log. As you can see right here, it already came in, but this time before it got the permit all. You see right here with the Apple iPhone, but this time it came in and receiving a WLAN MDM no reg. Okay, so at this point, if I open a browser, and if you remember with our ACL that's being enforced right now, it's allow access to internet. So we can download the app for mobile Ireland a little bit here. So instead we're gonna try to access a local or a resource, which is our web server at 162.16.32.40. As you can see, it's being caught by the redirect. And we are now seeing a page for mobile device management enrollment. Okay, so step one is to click enroll. So we'll click on that. It's bringing up a, a new browser page and it's telling us that we need to download a mobile iron, mobile at work client application. Okay, so we need to click on get app. And then pretty much just basically follow the instructions. Here we are at the download page on the app store. So let's go ahead and download. Just gonna take a couple minutes here for the application to download and install. And again, this is exactly why we need to allow the device to access the iTunes or app stores or Google Play. Okay, so it's been downloaded and installed. So we can click open. And here's bringing up the mobile at work application. And now we need to lock in with our user ID or username. And that would be employee one. This is why it's recommended to have your mobile iron server pointing to or integrated with the AD and that way you don't have to worry about syncing the database between ICE and mobile iron since they both point to the AD, especially if you have a large user base. So now username is employee one for the server is lm mobileironlapinits.com. Okay, and now it's asking us to accept certificate. So we'll click accept. Our password for the user is Cisco. Okay, and we just need to confirm for the location service. And now the mobile iron is going to push down the profile as part of the configuration or the security policies that's configured on the server. So we'll click OK. And here is the profile service. Let's go ahead and install. We'll go install now. Click install. Again, going through the some certificate process. And then once it's successfully installed, we can click done. And what I want to show you next is the profile that has been installed. You can see as soon as I click away from that, since the iPhone that we have here doesn't have passcode enable, the first thing it's trying to get us to do is to enable the passcode and this part of the security policy. So for now, let's click later. But what I want to show you is under settings. And you can see a list of profile here. The first two profile came from ICE when we did onboarding, but everything else pretty much came from the MDM. You can see there's quite a number of profiles right here. Well, VPN, we have a VPN configuration configured on the mobile iron and security this is for the passcode. You can see right here is the password policy. All right, so let me get out of that. And along with the mobile iron app, we also have the app at work since we have mobile iron configured to have the Cisco AnyConnect application available as you can see here it's also make that app available for us to download if you want to okay so right now let's get back on over to the ice page actually let me go back to we did not click continue on the browser so let me go back to that page right here and click continue and what this continue button usually do is to trigger a COA for uh, for ice to send it out for the user to re-authenticate and 
pretty much refresh its current status to ice. Let's just go ahead and refresh that. And you can see right here the COA went out as soon as we click that button. And now instead of being in a no registered state, we have moved down to the non-compliant state. And this is because we did not have the passcode enabled. All right, as you can see how we're progressing through the process right now to get our device connected to the network. What I want to show you next is the report for the MDM. If you want to get a little bit more information as far as the status of the MDM device. Okay, so it will be under endpoints and mobile device management. We click on those. We can filter based on today. We click run. Let me scroll. You can see server is LM ICE 1 with the MAC address. And what I want to show you is the, uh, these sets of columns right here. It gives you a little bit more information as far as what ICE is seeing for the device posture. So registration, since the first uh, entry right here is back when we did not have the device registered with the MDM, that's why the status right here came back and said unregistered. But once we went through the registration and downloaded the app, the status has become registered. But instead, here with the MDM compliant, it says not compliant. Okay. So, uh, additional information you can see here is also the manufacturer, which is the Apple iPhone 5. And the failure reason is telling us right here also is that data protection is disabled. And this is why it's failing the compliant. Okay, now let's go over on the mobile iron interface and see what it looks like. So if you go over to devices, here we have our employee one device for our iPhone 5 and a little exclamation right here. It said data protection is disabled. So it's throwing up a warning for that. But nevertheless, it already shows up on the mobile iron as a registered device. Okay, so now we're going to go back to our iPhone and bring up the mobile iron application. As you can see, we have a warning also here that said device is not compliant. This is how the user is prompted that the device is currently not in compliant. So if you kind of click over to the right, it's just said the access has been disabled, but it doesn't really tell us exactly why we are not in a compliant state. Okay, so at this point, if you go back and trying to access the same internal resource, and again, since we're in the non-compliant states, we said we could, we should have access to internet. And you can see that we do. We can go to cisco.com. But what we shouldn't have access to is the internal resource, which is our web server, 32.40. And you can see we are being redirected one more time, but this time we're seeing a different message. And it said the device is not compliant with the mobile iron. And the reason is the data protection is disabled. Okay, so it's telling us exactly what we're failing for the compliance check, and the recommendation is to turn on or set the password for the device. Okay, so now we're going to try to bring the device into compliant by setting the password. So that would be under the general passcode lock. This is for iPhone. We're going to turn on the passcode, and we're going to give it 1478, just some number. 1478. Okay, and that should be all set. At this point, the mobile iron has no idea or has no knowledge that the device should now be in compliance. So what we need to do is to force the device check-in unless you want to wait until the next cycle. The way to force the check-in, we can go under Setting, Check for Updates. This is just to speed up the process of mobile iron discovering the new posture information on the device. So we're going to force the device check-in, and then we'll click Check-in. Give it a couple seconds before we jump over onto the mobile iron interface. And we're trying to refresh the page, and you can see the exclamation has disappeared. And the last check-in was six seconds, so you can see that the fourth check-in worked. And we should now be in compliant. So we can go back onto our web browser. And again, ICE is not aware of any of this until we force another COA by clicking continue on the web browser where we left off. And this should force another COA to disconnect and reconnect the device. And if you now go back to ICE, as you can see, this is the COA that went out with the empty identity. And then the user or the device came back authenticated, and this time receiving permit all. And that's because the device is in full compliant. And just to prove that, going back to our 
iPhone, trying to get to internet. We still have access to internet. And then trying to get to the resource that didn't work for us earlier, which is 32.40. You can see we can hit the internal resource now. Okay, now reviewing the MDM report. Let's refresh the page, run it one more time. Got two additional, looks like, right here. This is the one that matters to us, the top one. So registration is good. MDM compliance is good. This encryption pin locks, they're both enabled at this point. Okay, and this page right here tells us exactly what we're passing and what we're failing as far as the compliance check or posture information. All right, so at this point, our iPhone is in compliant and has full network access to the network. The next thing we're going to do is what we can do as far as user managing or even admin managing those mobile devices. The first thing is from the admin perspective. So what we can do, if you go under the identity management and look under identities and endpoints, here you see a list of endpoints that the ICE has been seeing. And for us, it's the Apple iPhone. So if you click on that, you can see there's an MDM action that becomes available. And that's from the admin perspective, we can do a culprit wipe or pin lock. As you can see, there's very limiting options that's as far as what we can do here. Okay, comparing that to what you can do from the mobile iron admin interface itself with these actions right here, it can lock, unlock, send message. And there's also more actions as well. This is for Android only, it's for iOS only. and Here's a wipe option, which is the factory reset. So use that with caution and then retired, which is equivalent to the corporate wipe. And that's just basically removing the mobile iron app and all the other configuration and policies that came along with it. Okay, well, as far as the My Device Portal. So let's see what we can do on the device portal. So let me lock in with employee one, Cisco. And here we have our iPhone. If you select that, we can do a full wipe which is again factory reset the device, corporate wipe or pin lock. So let's first try pin lock since it's uh, the least intrusive. Click pin lock. Yes, we want to pin lock the device remotely. Give it a second here. And you can see, although it takes a couple seconds, but eventually the command came through and now we are forced to re-enter our passcode on the iPhone. Next thing we're going to try is to corporate wipe, and that's pretty much remove the device from the MDM registration and pretty much start from scratch. So right here, corporate wipe, click OK. As you can see, the app at work icon has already disappeared. And now if we go into the mobile iron application, you can see that the user has been forced to lock out, and now we are asked to re-enter the username. Okay, as far as the profile that got downloaded during registration, you can see the profile are now gone as well. So we're just left with the two existing profile that we had from the ICE onboarding. Okay, but the thing is, although the device has been corporate wipe, the network access is not really removed from the device. So if you're still trying to go to cisco.com, you can see it's still working. Even the internal resource, which is say to 1632.40, and that's also working as well. And this is because ICE did not issue any COA or anything as part of the corporate wide process. So what you need to do, because at this point, if user is not disabled or the user account is not disabled, they can just trying to register the device with MDM again and still have full access to the network. So what you might also want to do is to mark device as loss. So I'm going to do right here. And that way you force the COA to go out, disconnect the device from the network. And then that way, if the device is trying to get back in, as you can see here, it gets blocked and pretty much lose all the network access. Okay, so that's all of our testing for our iPhone. Next, we're going to do our Android.